Good afternoon, students. Today we will be discussing the Ghanaian movements. Uh, we will be discussing the earlier Ghanaian movements, the, the, that is, the Ghanaian movement from movements from 1917 to 1919. Uh, these were the early movements. Gandhi was trying to establish himself in India as a leader, and we see how his uh, success in South Africa led to the proceedings when he came to India. We've already discussed yesterday that he reached India in, on, in 1915. Then for a year, he traveled across the subcontinent to understand what is the uh, scenario of the country right now. And one thing that he realized is that masses, there's a great difference between the urban centers and the, and the, and the countryside. So what he realized is that the actual Indians living in the countryside are, are deprived of any sort of uh, upliftment that has, been, that has been started by the British government. And thus he tried to bridge a gap between the urban centers and the rural areas. So today we are going to discuss uh, four very important early movements of Gandhi, which created a stage for him for the future of uh, starting an era called Gandhi era. So let's get started with it. The first movement that we are going to discuss is Champaran movement, one of the first and one important and successful movement of uh, Gandhi. So first, uh, it happened in Champaran. This is a village in uh, in Bihar in 1917. Now, in this area, this area was known for indigo plantation. As you all know, indigo was uh, cultivated in India as an indigo is a natural dye. Prior to World War One, we do not have any other sort of dyeing dyeing uh, of cloth that was dye a cloth dye agent that we had and it was only indigo and uh, so after industrial revolution we have looms of uh, cotton now and cotton needs to be dyed and thus Indian uh, peasants were asked to, to grow indigo it was a compulsory uh, concept so in early 19th century Jarvin planters forced the cultivators of Champaran to cultivate indigo on 3 20th of their holdings in of their holdings, they had to go grow indigo. This is known as the Khatiya system. That is three twentieth of your part. So if you have twenty parts, in three uh, parts you have to grow uh, indigo. The rest seventeen, you can grow anything that you want. However, uh, one thing that you have to understand, indigo has a very uh, negative impact on the soil type. It sucks up the, uh, the fertility of the soil, and then the land has to then be had to be fallow for a very long time to regain the fertility of the soil. But every year you have to do this thing in your system. So every year, three of your of your land holding has to grow indigo. So in one year, if you're going to grow it in, in one section, then the other year you have to grow it in some other section because the soil fertility after growing growing indigo would have been completely depleted. Now the cultivators were also forced to divert the best part of their land to cultivating indigo. Further, they were also harassed, they were, their uh, land was seized if they were not able to grow this and then they, were, uh, they, were, they had to undergo a lot of atrocities uh, by the European planters. So this has created a lot of problem for the uh, peasants at Champaran. In Bengal also, we find a similar system happening. However, a peasant uprising had led to this entire uh, system being removed. So Champaran uh, peasants also decided that they're going to now look for an alternative because this can, they cannot do this for a long run. And that's when we have coming of Gandhi and uh, people saw him as one of the person who can then uplift their condition and try to remove all the evils from the society. And thus a local peasant by the name of Ram Kumar Shifla followed Gandhi all over the country. He came to Lucknow, then persuaded him to come to Champaran and investigate on the matter. So he asked him that, why don't you join us, see what is happening in Champaran, and then you decide whether we should go, what should be the next course of action. So, uh, by this time, uh, Gandhi had already started gaining uh, a foothold in Indian politics. 
for people like Rajendra Prasad, Mazarul Haq, J.B. Kaplani, and Madhavi Sai, uh, good friends of, uh, of Gandhi. They all reached Ambaran in 1970, and then they started looking into the matter of this indigo plantation uh, uh, plantation and also indigo cultivators. Uh, while they were doing this investigation, this had led to uh, the local government of the region to get very agitated. So they decided that uh, they ordered, they gave a strict order that Gandhi and his uh, 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 people who have accompanied him should leave Champaran as soon as possible. However, Gandhi decided that he's going to stay put and he's ready to face a trial. Uh, after this, he launched a satyagraha where they did nothing. They would just go and sit outside the, the commissionerate's office and they would just, just sit there. He asked all the peasants to, to not do anything, just sit there and demand that the Inkatiya system should be removed. Uh, this pressurized they would, uh, the government was not used to this non-violent form of resistance and that too resistance from the peasants. So ultimately, the government had to uh, set up an inquiry in which Gandhi was uh, nominated as a member. Gandhi convinced the commission that this Teen Katya system should be removed. So the system was abolished. Another uh, uh, demand of Gandhi was that all the uh, peasants have to be reimbursed the money that these indigo planter plantation owners have all have taken away from the people. However, that was some a demand that was not completely fulfilled. However, 25% of the money that was illegally taken from the peasants in terms of taxes, in terms of not being able to grow indigo was now returned back to the peasants. So you see that first principle of Gandhi became a success and this created a, a wave of information for the rest of the country also to see him as the leader because this was for the first time any uh, any national leader had gone to a village and fought for their rights. Mostly, if you even see the extremists, we would find them uh, extremist leaders like Tilak, like Blas uh, Go, Blas Bose, all of them were very urban in nature and they never really got in touch with the uh, countryside of the subcontinent. This was for the first time a person coming from South Africa actually took the first initiative that was in the rural areas of Bihar. So Gandhi then started garnering a lot of uh, um, a lot of uh, acceptance and a lot of praise from the people of the Indian, of Indian masses. The next uh, 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 movement that he started was an Ahmedabad mill strike. So see, see from, from a rural setup, now he's moving to a more urban setup. Now, Ahmedabad mill strike was a very different nature. By this time, the Champaran uh, success has already reached all the uh, uh, places of the continent. And February, uh, in the February, March 1918, uh, there was a conflict between uh, Gujarat mill owners and workers on question of plane bonus. Now, plane bonus was nearly 80% of their salary. Now, these Gujarat mill owners, had, this is the time of war, decided that they're not going to give a uh, plane bonus. And with the withdrawal of pay plague bonus, the workers demanded that their salary should be hiked by 50%. Now, this created a rift between the workers and the mill owners. Ahmedabad was one of the largest uh, industrialized area of the subcontinent. And also, uh, by this time, the workers were not in any form of association or union. However, the uh, Ahmedabad was dominated. Most of the workers were staying in Ahmedabad, so they, did, they decided that they were not going to work until the mill owners decide on their demands. Now, Gandhi was invited from the side of the of the mill owners. Uh, Anusya Ben Sarabhai, she was a socialist, though she was also the sister of uh, um, Ambalal Sarabhai, who was an uh, who was a rich mill owner of Ahmedabad. She invited Gandhi to mediate between the workers and the mill owners. Uh, initially, so he was invited from the side of the mill owners, but after looking into the situation, he decided that uh, Gandhi is going to work, is going to uh, take the course of the workers because that is something that is more important. A, the workers' demand was justified since pay bonus was taken away. They want, they had to increase uh, their salaries. B, this is the war time, and most of these workers are there is a rise in price of everything, and thus uh, these uh, 
uh, workers cannot subsist on a meager salary that has been provided to them. So, uh, however, he Gandhi decided that he uh, the demand of uh, the of the workers is just too much. Fifty percent raise would be too much. So he said, let's let's settle at thirty five percent, and the uh, and all the workers agreed to it. Now, in March nineteen eighteen, under leadership of Gandhi, there was a strike in the cotton mill. All cotton mills all across Ahmedabad went on strike. They did not. They refused to even open the gates of the mills. So this uh, led to a very uh, big commotion, and the police was called. Uh, Gandhi or uh, the mill owners tried to forcefully enter the enter the mills, and they demanded that if the workers don't enter, then they are going to be. They are thrown away, uh, they will be unemployed. Gandhi then used the final measure that is, he went on hunger strike that he's going to fast until death if the demands of the workers are not to be fulfilled. The mill owners then decided that this is a great situation and they did not want the uh, if Gandhi dies, it's going to create a commotion. So they agreed. Now, however, they asked Gandhi to be the mediator. Now, when Gandhi uh, came in uh, in the meeting in the committee where it was decided that the wages are going to increase but rather than 35% 27.5% is going to be the rate, uh, rise of wage the workers were not happy about it however uh, they agreed because Gandhi had already agreed with the mill owners however within next one year 1920 we will 19 uh, 19 and 1920 we will find that because of this uh, this movement, what had happened is the trade union, uh, or the, cotton, the mill or trade union that started the, was, uh, had a foundation in Ahmedabad. So we had the first uh, mill or uh, cotton mill or trade union that was established in 1820s. Uh, Gandhi also, uh, if he was not the leader of, the revo of this uh, particular movement, then the uh, workers who were very agitated would have led into who picketing of the shops, which ultimately would have hampered them also. And it, the incident that happened was purely non-violent. So not even a single worker had to go to jail because of the entire thing. It was a very peaceful labor. Though it is considered not a very successful movement of Gandhi because from 35%, he came down to 27.5% and the peasants were, and the workers were not happy with it. So this was end about the mill strike. The next is Kheda Satyagraha. Now Kheda is a region in Gujarat, uh, and uh, Gandhi supported uh, the peasants of Kheda uh, in their struggle against collection of land revenue when their crops had to be. Uh, Kheda, uh, there were a lot of problems in Kheda. There was there were delay in rain, so we had, they had a bad spell of drought. Uh, there was sudden rise in agriculture wage. This is the time period of the war still. Uh, so it's in 18, 1918 only, and uh, there were high uh, rate of in inflation because of the of the of the World War One, and also there was outbreak of bubonic plague in the entire region. So whatever they had less number of peasants, uh, so thus the wages were high. There were inflation rates, and further the crops have been destroyed because there was late rain. The peasants of Kheda could not pay the revenue and were demanding revenue collection to be relaxed. Now, if so many problems had happened, so they had demanded the British government to relax it. However, the British government raised the revenue. So uh, all of them uh, then decided that they are going to uh, go for a new revenue campaign. The local leaders had already started this, but uh, it did not reach into a very successful point. So with the help of Gujarat Mahasabha, uh, they then went uh, to ask for Gandhi's support. On 22nd March, Gandhi decided to launch a Satyagraha in their support. Uh, Sardar Vallabhai Patel, he was a very uh, promising lawyer of the time. He left his job and then he joined this movement. Then ardent Gandhi, namely Narhari Parikh, Mohanlal Pandya, Indulal Yagnik and Ravi Shankar Vyas toured the entire countryside of Kheda, organized the villagers and gave them political leadership and direction under the guidance of Gandhi. By April, uh, the Bombay government uh, partially fulfilled the peasants' demand by not confiscating the properties of defaulting peasants who could not pay. In June, Gandhi withdrew the campaign, so it was decided that if you're not able to pay the uh, revenue, your land was not taken. And for the next year, uh, uh, another uh, compromise that was reached, that revenue was waived for that year and the next year because of the 
bad situation, it was considered that they don't have to pay. The entire revenue has been waived off. So this also was one of a very successful uh, movement of Gandhi. Initial success, again, in countryside, his success is much more uh, creative and much more uh, widespread than in the urban areas. And thus, uh, Gandhi became the voices of the masses. Now, this another uh, movement, Rawlit Satyagraha, is one of the most crucial and one of the I think turning point of the Gandhian ideology and Gandhian movement. So there was a Rawlit Act that was passed, and according to this Act, any Indian on the on briefest uh, suspicion can be arrested without any and can be uh, put behind the bars without any trial. But this gave a lot of privilege and a lot of power in the hands of the police to just uh, uh, arrest anybody whom they even have a slightest of uh, of uh, of. Uh, any doubt on the person they could easily do that and the government has given them the right so in uh, february 1919 uh, gandhi decided that he's going to form he's going to fight against this travel attack and he founded a satyagra sabha whose membership uh, members took a pledge to disobey the act that they are not going to be in favor of act and uh, thus to quote arrest and imprisonment that they are not going to then go for imprisonment or arrest gandhi asked the nationalist worker to go to the village now this is something that was in me because by this time we have seen that the moderates and the, and the extremists both have failed in uh, continuing the nationalist movement and uh, nationalist movement has remained the domain of only urban areas. Gandhi for the first time asked the nationalist leaders, the workers that uh, have joined uh, the Satyagraha Sabha to go to the villages because according to Gandhi the real India is in the villages. He increasingly turned the face of nationalism towards the common man and symbol of this transformation was to be Khadi. Now, Khadi became the symbol of, the, of Indians, of common people, because now no more people would be uh, wearing the Western clothes. They, when he said, if we are fighting for, the, for freedom of our nation, then the symbols also that we have to use would, should be indigenous. No uh, ideas from the West. The, everything that we are going to talk about would be an, an idea that is based in the minds of the people. Or hand spun and hand woven cloth, it soon became the uniform of the nationalists. So, and soon we find the khadi became the uh, dress of all the nationalists who were now in part of the national struggle. Then uh, he demanded that everybody should uh, develop self reliance and also the culture that they have and self-help is something that uh, Gandhi has always talked about. So he started spanning uh, uh, cotton every day and, do, and uh, after him doing that, people started doing that in mass level and thus everybody decided that they're going to spin their own cotton and that is how they're going to put a pressure on Manchester's and on Manchester uh, industries and also on the foreign good. Thus, on March, uh, March and April 1919, witnessed a remarkable political awakening in India. There were hartal strikes and demonstrations. Uh, Gandhi went on to ask for non -co for a mass level hartal and strike everywhere, wherever possible. And thus, we find that there were strikes and uh, demonstrations all across. The government was just determined to suppress the mass agitation since it was non-violent. They did not know how to how to how to work on it, so they decided they're going to suppress this. It repeatedly lightly charged and fired upon an armed uh, demonstrator at Bombay, Ahmedabad, Calcutta, Delhi, and other cities. So in most of the cities, there were hartal, there were demonstration by students, by lawyers, by pe by people are working in the mills, and uh, repeatedly, what would happen is that lati charge would be done. Then Gandhi gave a call for a mighty Hartal on 6th April 1919. And in 6th April, it was decided that there are going to be a widespread Hartal all across. And that's when we find that most of the leaders, uh, nationalist leaders, were then put behind the bar. And uh, this uh, became, uh, people responded in a very enthusiastic manner. And that's when, we uh, that's when it was decided that there is going to be a mass Hartal and all the big leaders were then put behind the bars. Now, something particular happened in Punjab. Uh, two of their very important leaders were put behind the bars. So people on 14th of April, 1919, decided to protest peaceful, pro uh, pro stage a peaceful protest at Jallianwala Bagh. So the entire Jalianwala Dive opened fire on the peaceful protesters and 
thousands and thousands of people were killed. However, after this, General Dyer was not even, people were demanding his court martial. However, nothing happened. He was just sent back to Europe and this led to a mass uh, agitation all across in India, with the entire Janya Vallabhag massacre happening. This even led to uh, people like Ravindana Tagore who were given knighthood. He returned his knighthood and he decided that he's not going to take any uh, any any uh, title from a uh, from a government that is so brutal, who does not even uh, who has massacred people, uh, Gandhi, and obviously other people also. There were overwhelming uh, response, and there was a total atmosphere of violence. People were violently agitating against this entire uh, wrong that has happened. Seeing this. Uh, atmosphere of violence, Gandhi withdrew the movement in, on 18th April after confessing that it's a Himalayan blunder because people in India do not know how to have a non-violent protest and thus this entire movement without even reaching <coughs> sorry, without even reaching the culmination was withdrawn and it was considered as a very uh, a very meek step on the part of Gandhi where everything was, people were so enthusiastic to withdraw such a big movement. However, he did withdraw it and soon we find that Rahul and Satyagra, the initial movements of Gandhi came to an end. And with this, we come to an end of the early movements of Gandhi. Now we are going to discuss the next phase of his life that is from 1920s onward and the big movements that he started. Thank you students.